and her legacy. Mary Sumner started Mother's Union in England in 1876, but not many people know that 10 years later, in 1886, Annabella Hayes started Mother's Union in Ireland. Prompted by a member of Rohini Mother's Union and with the agreement of all Ireland trustees, we applied to the National Heritage Council for funding to refurbish Annabella's grave, which we successfully received. Little did we know what a learning curve we would be on by proceeding with this project. Firstly, there was the application to the Heritage Council, which had to be completed online. And then to keep within the regulations of the Heritage Council, we had to come up with ideas of how to promote the project and present it online. So thankfully, with a good team of people who helped pull it all together, here we are today with a presentation of before and after. We have a few people lined up to talk with us this morning. Uh, firstly, we have June Butler of All Ireland Mothers Union. Uh, she's our All Ireland President. We have Rachel Devlin and Sylvia Ailing, both members of Dublin and Lendelock Mothers Union. Uh, we see, I see we have Christine Baker from the Heritage Council. And firstly, I'm going to hand you over to June Butler, our, our All Ireland President. Thank you, Karen, and um, just a word of thanks to the team from Dublin Glendalough and further afield who have made the whole project possible and this morning possible. So thank you. It's my pleasure to welcome you all to this morning, coffee morning. I hope you've all got coffee to hand. Um, as Karen said, my name is June Butler. Those of you who don't know me, I'm the All-Ireland President of Mother's Union and um, I have been that for the last three years. I'm also the zonal trustee for Ireland, representing Ireland on the worldwide trustee board. And that will continue until December when Ara Suter, who is with us this morning, will take over as zonal trustee. I think probably you know uh, or have an idea of what the All Ireland Mothers Union president does. But I have to say that the zonal trustee has also quite a challenging role because um, as a member of the worldwide trustee board, they are the people who manage the affairs of Mother's Union worldwide, which includes finances and responsibility for keeping Mother's Union afloat, which has not been easy over this triennium due to the pandemic. But that same goes for Mother's Union in Ireland and we've been trying to do our best. Annabella Hayes, uh, like Mary Sumner, the founder of Mother's Union, could not have foreseen how Mother's Union would have grown, developed and changed when she decided to start a branch of Mother's Union in Rohini in the, we gather, the 1886-87 year. Like her friend Mary Sumner in the south of England, Annabella Hayes was a rector's wife with the power of leadership in her own parish. And some of us know and have experienced the power of leadership of a rector's wife um, on their patch. So uh, Annabella Hayes decided to begin a branch on her own territory, but the concept of Mother's Union spread throughout Ireland and Mother's Union flourished here, particularly in the mid and late 20th century. We really owe so much to Annabella Hayes, and we will hear much, much more about her over this morning. I would ask you if you have any questions or thoughts or want clarity on anything, if you would please put it into the chat box so that we can uh, pick it up there. Also, we are recording this morning, and I hope no one has any objections to that, but we do want to put it onto our website. If you do want to absent yourself from the photograph, you can, of course, turn off your video. OK, so before we start, can I ask you all just to be still for a few moments and we will open with a short prayer. Loving Lord, we thank you for being among us this morning as we gather using the blessing of this technology to learn more about the founder of Mother's Union in Ireland, Annabella Hayes. We give you thanks especially for her life, 
and her vision, for her strength of character, and for her determination to plant this new organization firmly in Ireland. As we look to the past with thanksgiving for her witness and for all that has been achieved in Ireland in the name of Mother's Union, we also, Lord, affirm our resolve to continue to build on the heritage of Annabella Hayes and seek to serve God by the example she has shown us to help anyone in adversity and to establish a solid foundation for the generations to come. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So thank you for being here and can I pass you back to Karen? Thank you, June, for um, welcoming us all and for explaining a little bit more about your role in Mother's Union and especially as a zonal trustee. Um, I will now pass you over to Rachel Devlin and Sylvia Ailing, both Dublin and Glendalough members, and they are going to share with you a lot more history and information about Annabella Hayes. Over to you, Sylvia and Rachel. Thank you, Karen. Good morning, everybody. And just by way of introduction, um, I will just repeat only very little of what Karen and June have already said about Mary Sumner being the uh, founder of Mother's Union in Winchester in England. And she was the wife of the Archbishop of Winchester. Mother's Union was set up for the purpose of providing support and education to mothers in the rearing of their children in the Christian faith. And the three aims at the time were to uphold the sanctity of marriage, to awaken in mothers their great responsibility in training their boys and girls to be the fathers and mothers of the future, and to organise in every place a band of mothers who will unite in prayer and seek by their own example to lead their families in purity and holiness of life. It was an organisation aligned with the Church of England. Eleven years later, Annabella Hayes founded Mother's Union in Ireland, in Rohini, in Dublin. In the 19th century, women did not have the vote. They used their husband's name, therefore being only identifiable through who their husband happened to be and not in their own right. She was encouraged by her husband to set up the first branch of Mother's Union in Rohini, and this was done on the same lines as it was in England. And to talk more about Annabella, I will introduce Sylvia Ailing, who is a member of Mother's Union in Rohini branch, and she will talk about her, where she came from, who she was, her life, and we commemorate the centenary of her death in 1921. And Sylvia will also talk about finding her grave, setting about having it restored and marked in an appropriate way to remember her and her legacy to Mother's Union in Ireland. So Sylvia, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Am I on air? <laughs> You're on air, yes. And I suppose uh, we could start out, Sylvia, by you telling us maybe who was Annabella Hayes? Annabella was born in 1847, the year after the famine years in Ireland. She was the daughter of Thomas Edkin William Wilson, spelt with two L's, and um, his wife Maria. Her father was a solicitor, so she was born into what would have been a well-to-do family. Um, they lived in Upper Mount Street in Dublin. She married when she was only 19 years of age. She married the Reverend Francis Carlyle Hayes, and she married into a wealthy family, a large family. They lived at Edmundstown House in Rathfarnham, a big not, not exactly a stately home, but a big, a big family home. She and Frances moved to Rohini in 1873 
when he was made rector of Rohini by Lord Ardalon, who was, of course, one of the Guinness greats. Um, they moved there with their th five-year-old son. Um, they moved into the old Glebe House. The old Glebe House, or rectory as we would now call it, was situated on the main Holth Road, about a half a mile from All Saints Church, or the old St. Aston's Church, as it was in the first few years of their residence here. The house was a big old, as we should call it, a gentleman's residence, two floors over a basement, 14 rooms in all. They had a huge area of ground around it, about five acres. They had two ponies, they had stabling for the ponies, they kept hens, they had a pond for the ducks, um, they had some cattle. They would have had to travel to service, they'd hardly walk in Annabella's long Victorian dresses. They would have gone by their pony and trap or whatever their horse-drawn vehicle was to, to the, the old church, St. Asim's, and to the new church in Rohini, All Saints. They had two indoor staff. The 1901 census shows the whole family there and two in live-in lady staff, aptly called perhaps Martha and Mary. One was from Armagh and the other lady was from Leitrim. Um, in the 1911 census, the only people there were the parents and the youngest daughter, the two maid servants, and a gardener had been added. He was obviously helping Canon Hayes with all the ground they had. Canon Hayes was an avid gardener. He used to lecture on gardening. He wrote books on gardening. Um, he was a very busy man. And I'm sure Annabella was a great backup for him, as he was indeed to her. He was made, after two, two years after arriving in Rohini, he was made rural dean of Fingal, which involved, among other things, visiting each of the parishes in the Fingal area once a year and also entertaining the families of the Fingal clergy at the old Glebe house once a year. So that would have been one of Annabella's duties or pleasures to entertain all these clergy family all arriving in horse-drawn vehicles. I'm sure a great day was had by all. They also entertained the Sunday school children maybe once a year to a party. She entertained a lot of her family the Hayes side of the family seemed to have a lot of nieces and nephews, and she was known to entertain them frequently. They were great travellers. The Victorians were great people for travelling. Annabella and Francis had the financial means to travel, and among other places, they went to Canada. Um, Francis had a uh, an aunt there, they went to Canada. They went to Norway where Annabella had relatives. They went to Switzerland. They would have gone to England quite a few times. They went to the North quite a lot to visit their son who was a rector in Belfast. Um, and after the death of their second daughter, no, their older daughter, they went all the way to India to see where she had lived and worked. And travelled back again, that would have been quite a journey, but they managed it and returned again to Rohini. The children, briefly, the older boy, Ernest, went to St. Columbus College. He went to Trinity, studied divinity, and was um, a Church of Ireland rector. He went first to St. Luke's Parish in Belfast, where he was greatly appreciated for all the work he did among the congregation there and among the general community. He then moved to um, St. Mark's Parish in Dundila. And in fact, I had a message from a lady, an email from a lady in Dundila Parish, wondering if their former rector, Ernest, was in fact um, Anna, excuse me, Annabella's son. And I was able to confirm, yes, he was. So she was very pleased at that. Um, 
Mary Hayes, the second, the older daughter, trained to become a doctor. She went to Alexandra College. She went to the Royal University. This is now the National University. Trinity were not admitting lady students at that time. She finished her medical degree. She was trained in surgery and midwifery. And in 1905, she traveled all the way to India with a companion to work in St. Stephen's Hospital in Delhi. She also worked in a, a town about 50 miles south of Derry. She was there for three years, greatly appreciated by her work, skilled work among what would have been a very poor population, I would imagine, in a third world country. Unfortunately, in 1908, she became seriously ill. She wrote home telling her parents that she wasn't feeling well, she had a cough and so forth. And she died the next day, apparently from pneumonia. But the parents, Annabella and Francis, got a telegram a couple of days after her death telling them the sad news. But of course, the, the letter from Mary arrived weeks later. So that must have been really heartbreaking for Annabella and Francis. The second daughter, Clara, or she was known as Claire, the story is that she got a proposal in marriage from a Hubert Pakenham Walsh, who was uh, working as a clergyman in India. Now, the Pakenham Walshes and the Hayes family had known each other for many years. Clara accepted the proposal and travelled again all the way to India and married the Reverend Hubert Pakenham. They were luckily able to come home on a visit before Annabella died, they came back to Ireland for, I don't know how long, I suppose several weeks, maybe months, in around 1919, and were able to see Annabella and Francis before Annabella became seriously ill. So that must have been a great delight to Annabella and Francis. Francis retired in 1918, and they moved to premises that the Hayes family obviously owned, at 12 Northbrook Road, um, Annabella unfortunately became ill. She got the flu, it must have been the Spanish flu in 1919. And she rallied after that and then became ill again and was diagnosed with liver cancer and died in 1921 at the age of 74. There is actually a memorial to Annabella in All Saints Church in Rohini. It's um, a bit hard to find. It's, there was a new altar piece, a marble altar piece, put in under the communion table by Archbishop Plunkett. He was Lord Ardalorn's nephew. And on the side, on the upright, on the side of this, on one side there's a tribute to uh, Francis, and on the other side there's a tribute to Annabella, which reads, where is it? Here we are. In remembrance of Annabella Jane Hayes, wife of Canon Hayes, born 1845, died 1921, a succorer of many, which indeed she was, having set up the first branch of Mother's Union in Rohini in 1887, followed shortly afterwards by the setting up of a branch in St. Catherine's by the English wife of their then rector. Um, Mary Sumner visited Ireland several times. Mary Sumner visited Ireland several times uh, to encourage the work of Mother's Union. And there's a letter from her dated 2nd of August 1901. And she thanked Annabella for their day in Rohini. She, I don't, she visited other parishes as well. Um, she said, I'm longing to know that my beloved Mother's Union catches hold strongly and lastingly in Ireland. I, th I think it has. People have asked me how, how the grave came to be discovered. I was at a Mother's Union meeting in Christchurch about four years ago, and a lady asked me, knowing that I came from Rohini, a lady asked me, um, did I know where Annabella was buried? And to my shame, I didn't. So I found out from a parishioner that she was buried in Sutton. I rang up Fingal Council, 
the burials department, spoke to an extremely helpful lady there who gave me the website to log into, but in fact looked it up there and then for me and was able to give me the number of the grave. So a day or two later, my husband and I headed out to St. Vincent's, couldn't find the grave anywhere. The head groundkeeper or head um, supervisor at the graveyard, again, a most helpful man, knew immediately where the grave was from the reference number. He looked it up on the what looked like the original records, all handwritten, and he drove us up to the very top, all, all along the road, up to the very top of the graveyard. And there in the first line of graves was this little wooden uh, memorial. A sad sight to see. The grave was sadly neglected. I don't know when it had been tended. The, there were no curbstones. The wooden memorial, which was about five foot high, was wooden, made of teak. It hadn't rotted, but it was covered in moss and lichen over the years. You could barely discern the lettering on it. It's now transformed, thanks to the grant we got from, the Mother's Union got from the Heritage Council, and thanks to Finn Gall for their help, and thanks also to the uh, stonemasons from, from County Wicklow, Ballynockon, Des and John McAvoy, for the excellent work they have done. The wooden part has all been uh, cleaned off, the lettering has been restored, it is now firmly standing on a beautiful new granite plinth. There are granite curbstones around and the whole grave is covered in granite chippings. It is such an improvement. It's an amazing transformation. So thank you to the experts who, who were involved in that. Um, I think that's all I have to say about Annabella. She was a very extraordinary woman foresight that none of us might, might have been endowed with and we are just so grateful to her for starting Mother's Union here in Ireland and to see that it has flourished and gone worldwide in, in, in the years since. Thank you very much. Thank you Sylvia and just to finish off on um, about Mother's Union in particular and about how it developed um, Mother's Union in Ireland quickly expanded with 17 branches recorded in 1897. A structure was developed in alignment with the Church of Ireland and many other branches continued to be formed throughout Ireland. By 1940, the St. Lawrence O'Toole Chapel in Christchurch Cathedral was gifted to Mother's Union as a central chapel by the Dean, Dr. Barton. At the centenary uh, that was celebrated in 1987, a centenary fund was established whereby Mother's Union fundraises and provides grants to ordinance to help with their studies. Over the years, Mother's Union has lobbied government to raise the marriage age to 16 years and ultimately to 18 years. They dealt with the social problems of the day, such as poverty, setting up vigilance committees with other denominations, temperance, hospital visiting, thrift and food economy during the war. They were subjects of interest. During the Second World War, representatives of Mother's Union were placed on the Standing Council for Women's Organisations and Women's Auxiliary Housing Committee in Belfast. Today, Mother's Union is a member of the National Women's Council of Ireland, which aims to improve the welfare for women and girls. They are involved in the annual 16 Days of Activism Against Gender-Based Violence. While attending to all these issues, the original idea of Mary Sumner and Annabella Hayes to form a band of mothers praying for the Christian development of the next generation is as necessary in today's world as it was in the late 19th century. Mother's Union has 4 million members in 84 countries around the world. Both women have to be commended for their foresight in founding an organisation with such an expansive reach. In Ireland, on the centenary of her death, Annabella Hayes is getting the profile and the recognition she deserves 
for her work in Mother's Union. So that's what we have to remember Annabella for. Thank you, um, <clears throat> Sylvia, for such an informative presentation. You have obviously done an awful lot of research on Annabella Hayes, and it's lovely to hear her background and where she came from and how they lived in her time. And thank you, Rachel, for um, speaking to us, letting us know about Mother's Union. And isn't it interesting to see how relevant Mother's Union is today having the same needs as it did when it was started by Annabella Hayes and Mary Sumner. I am now going to share some pictures of um, Annabella's grave. Um, Sylvia already spoke about them, but uh, sorry, Sylvia, Sylvia already spoke about the headstone and how it was made from teak. And um, I'm going to show you some pictures now of before and after the work was done. So please just bear with me a moment until I share my screen get this going. Can you see all, can you all see that all right? Yes. yes. Thank you. Okay, so, um, this was Annabella's grave um, a few months ago. And as Sylvia said, her um, grave is at the highest point of St. Fintan Cemetery in Sutton. And you can actually see in, in the background uh, the sea and the grave and headstone are obviously very open to the elements. And as you can see, it's been very weathered. There's been a lot of, uh, of mildew which has accumulated over 100 years of exposure. And um, it's amazing to think that that has actually stood there for 100 years in wind and rain of Irish weather. And it still looks good, even though it's got some uh, mildew on it. The wood is inscribed, but it's not very visible because of its weathered state. Um, on one side, it has the words love, joy, and peace. And at the front, uh, at the cross, where you can see the cross engraved, it has Annabella's initials and her husband Francis' initials. <clears throat> this is the grave today. And as you can see, it looks absolutely fantastic. You can see the cross on the wood and all the mildew has been removed. Uh, John and Des McAvoy did a super job of cleaning the, the headstone. This is original and it's the original one that has been there all these years. It's just been cleaned up and looks amazing. So hopefully it will test, stand the test of time for another hundred years. And that's the other side of it. Um, we were wondering, we had a lot of discussion about how we were going to mark the grave uh, with Annabella's name. And also to say that we had to receive funding from the Heritage Council. And we were afraid if we put a plaque on the grave that it would be desecrated and um, weathered. So we came up with the idea of having the plinth which is limestone, we decided to have it engraved. And you can see what it said, oh, I don't know how clear that is for you. Dedicated in remembrance of the centenary of Annabella Hayes, 1847 to 1921, founder of Mother's Union in Ireland, refurbished by All Ireland Mother's Union, grant aided by the Heritage Council, 21st of the 8th, 2021. Now we picked the 21st of the 8th because that is next Saturday, the day that we are going to have the grave rededicated. And I hope a lot of you, some of you anyway, will certainly be with us. Um, the rededication is at quarter past 12 next Saturday in St. Vincent Cemetery, and you are all welcome. We will try and 
put it online or record it and you can see it afterwards if you are unable to attend. We've also had to bring the project online for Heritage Week, which runs from today until next Saturday, the 21st of August. And you can find our project online on the Heritage Council website, which is heritagecouncil.ie and research for Annabella Hayes legacy. And I'm just going to give you a brief run through how you can find that. Again, bear with me for a moment, please. So if you go onto the National Heritage Council website and look for projects, this is what you're going to see if you look for Annabella Hayes. And just, I'm just going to run through it very briefly um, and hopefully you'll have time to go and look at it yourselves and other people will look at it as well. I'm not sure if you remember back in February, which was the actual anniversary of Annabella's death, um, Reverend Norman McCausland in Rohini Parish put together a short video and he talks about Annabella Hayes and Mother's Union. And it's very interesting. We, we managed to get a copy of it and we have put it up on this uh, page. Now we have also, Sorry, I've lost my way slightly. We have also put together this presentation, um, which we will be putting up on the All Ireland website and the Dublin and Glendalough website. And if anybody else wants it for their website, we will certainly share it. So this again gives a brief outline of who Annabella Hayes is. So when you see this presentation, if you just press on the buttons, it'll bring you to a brief description. And we've kept it as brief as possible, um, just to give an outline of Annabella Hayes. So who, the first one was Annabella Hayes. It talks about the life of Annabella Hayes, which is um, also some of the information that we have received from Sylvia. We have how it all started, as in how Mother's Union started between Mary Sumner and Annabella Hayes. We have pictures of Annabella's gravesite, which are similar to what you've just seen. There's a map showing you exactly where um, the grave is in St. Fintan's Cemetery. And then we have the before and after photographs. And then if you just go back and hit home, it will bring you back to the main page. And then we have an outline of who Mother's Union is. I think. Yeah, it's just loading. Sorry, it's just taking a minute to load. Oh, why do these things never work properly when you're trying to present them? We'll have to look into that. Okay, we have events. So there's the invitation that we sent out to um, branches and other people for next Saturday for the rededication and also for a short memorial service in uh, Rohini Church in All Saints in Rohini. And also just to remind anybody who's coming, please don't forget to bring your packed lunch. Um, we have to keep everything within the lines of the government warnings at the moment with COVID restrictions. So um, I'd ask you to remember that. And here we have some photographs of Annabella at various stages of her life. So now I would like to pass you over to Christine Baker who is from, sorry, I better stop sharing this from that. I would like to pass you over to Christine Baker, who is a member of the Heritage Council, and she's going to talk to us and share a little bit about the work of the Heritage Council. Christine, I know I have seen, I did see your name there. I know you're there somewhere. Hello, everyone. Um, I just want to say thank you very much to Karen for inviting me to uh, say a few words today. I just say I'm not from the Heritage Council. I'm the Heritage Officer of Bingal County Council. But um, I did agree to talk a little bit about the work that the Heritage Council do. Now, um, and 
listen, it's just a fascinating project. I knew nothing about Annabelle, Annabella Hayes beforehand, so it's an absolute delight to, to learn so much. Um, I'm just going to try the share screen thing, so just bear with me, please. Okay, can everybody see that? Yes? Yes. No? Yes, okay. we can. Brilliant. Okay, so you, I can't get it to move now. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay, now, there we go. So the Heritage Council was established as a statutory body under the Heritage Act in 1995. And its mission is the contribution that our heritage makes to um, our social, environmental and economic well-being. I mean, heritage is everywhere, I suppose. It's to, to highlight the value of that. So um, it's done through um, promoting education, knowledge and pride in national heritage. And the projects um, include heritage and school schemes, whereby um, local experts are facilitated to go into schools and, and you know, um, Bring, bring heritage to children. Um, National Heritage Week, of course, which we're participating in now. Um, the Collaborative Town Centre Health Check Programme, which is a bit of a mouthful, but um, it's about re revitalising um, historic town centres. So historic towns across the country um, in an economic and modern way, as well as through the heritage. Um, there's the Heritage Officer Programme, and then, of course, all the projects taken, undertaken by groups like yourself um, through the, the grant scheme. So the Heritage Officer Programme, um, as of, I think, about a couple of weeks ago, we now have a full complement. So there is a Heritage Officer in every county in Ireland um, and in some of the cities as well. So Galway, for instance, has a, a, heritage, is a city heritage officer and a county heritage officer. So our function is to promote the understanding, conservation and preservation um, of heritage by improving the status and perception in the local area. So how we do that is um, we have a, a local heritage plan or county heritage plan and also by working with local heritage groups. So Fingal's um, heritage plan, which will be reviewed um, next, next year, um, is, is in place and it's got four major themes which are communicating heritage to a wide audience and that's again is what Heritage Week this year is about. It's, it's opening up heritage to maybe non-traditional audiences, caring for our heritage, much like the project that you've just undertaken, ensuring that that physical remains, you know, are protected into the future. Um, increasing the level of community activity for heritage, um, supporting the local economy, and we have 41 actions that will care for that. So, um, Heritage Council funding um, supports projects like the Irish Wall Towns Network, the Heritage Sector Support Fund, the Historic Town Initiative, Community Heritage Grant Scheme and Local Authority Heritage Plans and Grants. Um, in Fingal, you can, we've made a big effort to go digital over the last year. Um, so we have our fingal.ie um, heritage and conservation section where you can find out all the projects that have been ongoing in the reports. We have our website. We also have our digital projects. Um, a number of the projects that we have um, are producing things like booklets, um, a colouring book for younger people, um, the Gardening for, Diver for Diversity project, um, which was national, and we have our snapshots um, of Fingal's past, um, which you can get a booklet from. It was the award winner for the county um, awards for um, Heritage Week last year. Um, and to bring it back to Annabelle Hayes, um, Annabella Hayes, the 
an ongoing theme is women on Fingal. So it's to increase the awareness of women's contribution, um, which often goes on highlighted. So it's been absolutely fabulous to have um, the project that you've undertaken to highlight Annabel Hayes undertaken. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Christine, do you have to stop screen sharing? Uh, okay, sorry about that. That's all right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's very odd, these things, when you have, you're doing a presentation, because I'm not sure if you can hear me or if it can be seen and stuff, so I hope that was okay. And if you have any questions, um, just fire away. That's very good. Thank you. Christine, that was great. Um, I think we're all on a learning curve at the moment about technology and Zoom <laughs> and how, how to get our message across. So thank you for your information. It was interesting to, to see it and hear about it. Does anybody have any questions for Christine? I just say hello, Robert. I haven't seen you in a few years. <laughs> Some rooting around your front garden in swords. <laughs> yes, I remember that very well. Uh, I did get down there, but I did get out, but I didn't go down again. <laughs> Lovely to see you, Christine. Thank you very much indeed. Very informative uh, for the overall uh, presentation of what Fingal can do for us. And uh, just to say thank you and to thank Fingal as well. Thank you. Not a bother. Okay, um, thank you for that. And it's funny how you never know who you're going to meet at these meetings, even like you'd say that when you were at a live meeting, never mind on a Zoom meeting. <laughs> um, okay, I'll now hand you over to June, who's going to give us an outline of what Mother's Union does today. Well, I don't know how I'm going to follow that because I've been amazed by what I've learned even in the last three quarters of an hour about Annabella Hayes. I knew a little, but I certainly didn't know all that. So thank you so much, ladies, for your contributions to this. And it's fascinating that Annabella Hayes, Christine, is going to become one of the women of Fingal um, because that's very important. Um, I was also going back to Sally's input uh, fascinated about St Mark's Dundella which is is my home diocese and um, I didn't know that their son was there but I know I do know that there's a very lively Mother's Union branch in Down and Dromore in St Mark's and um, I've no doubt that uh, Annabella Hayes would be delighted to know that her son probably had no small part in, in establishing that. Um, I've been asked to speak briefly about Mother's Union today, um, and it has a great deal of relevance, what we're doing in Ireland, um, as to what happened uh, in the beginnings of Mother's Union at the end of the 19th century. We are still in Ireland reaching out to those in need. Uh, and further beyond, of course, in the developed countries, and there was some reference there to Canada, and we know that Mother's Union in places like Canada and Australia are doing a lot of work with the Indigenous people, and also uh, our overseas work, and I don't think either Mary Sumner or Annabella Hayes could have envisaged the extent of the work that we would have been doing worldwide in 84 countries by this stage. In Ireland, um, we have steadily continued to work in our branches and in our parishes and in our communities. 
and the range of our activities continues to expand. The scope of what we do is amazing. And I'm going to just refer to a few little bits and pieces to not tell you, but to remind most of you of what we're doing. And please excuse me if I'm not including something you are particularly passionate about, because I could be here all morning talking to you about Mother's Union and what we in Ireland are doing. In our branches, as you know, we support our members in good times and in bad times. We help families at all times, and we of course support what we call our indoor members, those folk who are no longer able to attend our meetings. But of course, over the pandemic, a great number of us have become indoor members. So can I just emphasize how important it is to keep an eye on all our branch members? In terms of practical stuff, there are a lot of us doing craft work and knitting and sewing and doing what we can to help um, to outreach and to extend our, our um, scope into other areas. I mean, we're knitting for babies at the one end of the age scope and then the other there are comfort blankets and uh, twiddle muffs for those who are suffering from dementia. So that's all good, solid branch work. In our parishes, of course, we're there to, surprise, uh, to provide support and help to our clergy. And we do that in whatever way we can, whatever they will ask us to do. Some clergy ask more than others. Others just think they're the, the militians there to make tea. But we are very convinced that we have a stronger role than that. And of course, we're always there to provide prayer and help and you know practical issues uh, whatever is needed in parishes and, and then one part just to give you an example one parish of course we got very involved in a holiday food club the grub club to supply and help summer schemes where these children who normally would get uh, free school meals during the summer months didn't have that so we were helping with that to provide food in the community well we support um, play groups, we support uh, contact centres. In fact, we outreach to anyone who may be in need. And uh, it, it's been interesting. And, and there's one project, particularly, I know uh, the folk in Dublin Glendalough have been involved when they responded to a request from Dublin City Mortuary um, to provide cloth and small bags for um, stillborn babies. And I love the expression that the project name there was made with love. And I have to say that's what we all in Mother's Union do in whatever we do. Also in the community, we have our away from it all holidays. We are uh, we work with prisoners, whether it's crafts or showing care in some other ways. Um, we are currently looking uh, we Mother's Union trustees are currently dealing with a project on loneliness and that hopefully will come there'll be some uh, more information about that in the autumn of course every year um, for the last five or six we've been doing our 16 days of activism and that's actively supporting but also through prayer and encouragement those who are um, in any way um, suffering because of gender-based violence or more commonly, uh, we think of it as domestic abuse, but it's a, a wider range than that. So the whole range of activities and Jackie Armstrong leads Mother's Union in Ireland on that. And we have last year, we had a wonderful prayer diary, which actually went to every clergy in Ireland. And we're hoping to do something similar this year. We also, with those who suffer from gender-based violence, we help them to get back to work or to back to their homes or back to some sort of normality, I should say. Um, when they're forced to leave homes, we try to reinforce, to give them materials to get them back into new homes, or we work with those who provide hospitals for them. Um, we've been working with Women's Refuge and in recent, in the last year, with a group called Critical. So we're there actively rolling up our sleeves and getting on with it. And, you know, we can't list all our activities, as I say, but during the pandemic, it was a whole new world for Mother's Union. 
We couldn't meet as branches, but we were still working away there in the background to do what we could. And of course, we were telephoning those who were at home, who were lonely. We were sending cards. We were sending prayers. In some areas, they were we, we were delivering blessing bags with small items and goodies and prayers in those just to make our members realize that they were not forgotten. In Clocher, they produced um, a CD or DVD, and that was delivered with that was with hymns and, and blessings, and that was delivered to all residential homes, which was a wonderful thing uh, for those who were there. And of course, is being sold so that it raises more money and to rate to be able to do other work in their communities. Other members were visiting with goodies or doing shopping or collecting medicines. We were doing whatever was required. And there were treats for national health, well, for health service workers. And of course, more recently, some dioceses have been working to raise funds to, pro to provide vouchers for those who are suffering food poverty. And I think, I personally think that that's going to be an area of great importance in the future. I think food poverty is something that is not going to go away. We in Mother's Union trustees are focusing on how we can reconnect um, our branches and a leaflet has gone out recently to members with all sorts of ideas about getting back to it'll never be normal as it was but getting back to branch work um, and we can do that in so many different ways it doesn't have to be the formal meeting with the speaker and in Ireland we've talked about all the work that's done overseas but in Ireland we have our own mums in May fund which specifically is a fund to promote outreach and help our communities in Ireland um, it gives things like grants for school books, some of the AFIA grants, prints for printing money for printing materials and so forth, uh, supporting family fun days when we had those, but also supporting any activities now that provide um, a, a vehicle to reconnect our members. The funds and mums in May have to be boosted every third year and 2021 is the year that they need to be boosted again. And we hope that everyone throughout Ireland, all our members are doing something in their own way to help boost those funds. Uh, we have called it 21 and 21, and you can do 21 of anything that you want to do as long as your family supports you and gives a little bit of money to sponsor you doing it. Um, we have people walking, baking, reading, doing whatever, swimming, I think in some cases. It's wonderful. Do 21 of something that really pleases you and get your families to support you and put the money into our Mums in May fund because that money goes back to your diocese and to your branches. My personal challenge has been to walk 21 kilometres in every diocese in Ireland. Um, I'm getting there. I think I finished three and I'm still working on the next Saturday um, as part of the Heritage Week. We will be walking from Rohini to Sutton uh, before the service at 12.15, the rededication service. So we do hope that a lot of you will join us for that. Um, it's a very important day in the life of Dublin Glendalough in our memory of Annabella Hayes. And it will be lovely to get um, a lot of you there walking with Karen and me and others, obviously. And we will um, be getting hopefully quite a lot of publicity for that. So mums in May, very important because that money goes back to you. All the information about what we we're doing. Uh, we had um, Count Your Blessings calendar early in the year. And we hope a lot of people have done that. But all the information is on our website under mums in May. And I write a wee blog after every walk so you can see where I am. And um, everyone at every walk, there's somebody with me. So I do do the full seven kilometres, believe it or not, in every walk. So I hope that hasn't um, been repeating a lot of what you know, but you always find out something that Mother's Union people are doing. Our aim always is to put our faith into action. And that's what we do in every aspect of our work in Mother's Union. And of course, it's all underpinned with prayer. That's such an important of our areas. What our Mother's Union in Ireland is about, we reach out to anyone with our love, and we hope to make a difference to their lives. 
just as Annabella Hayes started to do in Rohini um, in 1886. So thank you for listening to me. I hope you've learned something. And back to you, Karen. Thank you, June. Um, I hope you've all been a bit more informed about Mother's Union. Um, I'm sure, as June said, you probably knew a lot about what was going on, but you mightn't have known what was going on in other dioceses. So it's always good to catch up and hear, hear what the competition are doing. <laughs> OK, ladies and gentlemen, um, I'd like to thank you for your time this morning. We are coming to the end of our coffee morning now. And first of all, I'm going to put you on the spot. Um, can anyone tell me one thing that they have learned about Annabella Hayes today that they didn't know before? And to answer, you're going to have to unmute yourself. Immediately, all the information that Sylvia was able to produce and Rachel, absolutely fascinating. And thank you very much indeed, both of you. Well done. Thank you. The breadth of the information, the, the, the very many things she was involved in uh, through the Mother's Union and anyway. Yeah. yeah. It was great to get was some a thorough update on Annabelle and particularly I wouldn't have been aware of would have read the article not been aware of her background and his mm -hmm. background and the fact that her life was early life was so much aligned to Mary Sumner's in itself. I was amazed at how much she travelled. Mm -hmm. um, you wouldn't think of people in that era travelling so just to so distant places. It sounds like she was a uh... A wonderful woman, very kind and very thoughtful and very inventive when she thought of bringing Mother's Union here to Ireland. And Mother's Union is wonderful, kind and thoughtful. So it really is a true um, tribute to its founder here in Ireland, Annabel Hayes. And thank you for the additional information this morning. It was really most informative. Thank you all. Yes, I enjoyed it very much. And um, Annabel was obviously born into a relatively well-off uh, family when we hear the history of her houses and her husband and her connections. So I, I think in the times that were then when everyone was very poor, I think she was probably fairly well off. Thank you, ladies. You are brilliant. Mm -hmm. Every one of you. It's just it's wonderful to think of her traveling on a uh, pony and trap from the rectory to the church. Yeah. Just, <laughs> you know, we all know the whole road and just to think of that so long ago, it was great. And thanks for, for all the information. Thank you, ladies. Um, don't forget to mute yourselves again just to cut out any background noise. Um, well, I'm glad to hear that you've all you've all taken in some some information today, which is great. Um, I won't hold you too long, but there are a few thank yous that I would like to say, and um, so this is my opportunity to say thank you, firstly, to June and the All Ireland Trustees for agreeing to proceed with this project. Thanks to Leslie Bailey and Kay Nesbitt who helped me with the um, Heritage Council application and also for brainstorming ideas to present this project. I don't know if I'm thanking you for the, doing that, to be honest. <laughs> We've had a lot of work over the last while. <laughs> However, this is where we are today and it's been a brilliant journey. Thank you to my Dublin Glendalough team, Ellen, Rachel, Joy and Margaret for their dedication and support over the last months to get us where we are today. And Margaret, especially for your Noel Island trustee, thank you for your help with the IT. I don't think we'd have ever got as far as we are without your help today. Also, thank you to Sylvia Aileen, who is our historian and expert on Annabella. And without her research, we would not have even got this project started. So a huge thank you to Sylvia. You've been marvellous with the work that you've done and, and the research. I'd also like to thank um, Christine, I think Christine has left us, but I would like to thank her uh, and Alison Harvey, who are both uh, heritage or Fingal, what did she say she was, a, a Fingal heritage officer. Um, and I would like to thank them for their support and guidance when we were filling in the application form for the grant. Um, and I have one last thank you, and that's to my niece, 
Megan, who um, has been a great support to me personally over the last couple of weeks, trying to get the project online. And she even came along and gave us a little, a little a guideline this morning when we were trying to get some IT issues out of the way. So I have to say thank you to her. So as I mentioned, as it's been mentioned a few times, you're all welcome to come and join us next Saturday for the rededication of Annabella's grave in St. Fintan Cemetery in Sutton at 12.15 and short memorial service afterwards in um, All Saints Church, Rihini. Um, I hope you have all become better acquainted with Annabella. And this project was started to recognize Annabella Hayes as a strong woman of Fingal in Dublin and to give her the acknowledgement and the profile she deserves for what she achieved and the continuation of her legacy. And just to finish off, Margaret is going to share with us a beautiful video. It only lasts a couple of minutes um, to show you, it'll guide you through the project. And it's just terrific. I think it's a great thing to finish with. So thank you all. And I hope you enjoyed your morning. Can you hear us? Yes. to finish. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you all. I can't say safe home, but just thank you for being with us this morning and see you all soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you. Well done. Thank you, Karen. Wonderful.